So guys, as an insurance agent, have you ever heard this objection at the end of your presentation? So Mr. Roscoe, that's the uh, options we got for you today. Um, out of those three options, which one do you want to go with? I need to think about it. I really need to think about it. And hearing I need to think about it, has it ever made you feel like this? Okay. Well, I guess I'll just call you tomorrow. Why don't I call you, David? Why don't I call you instead? How about that? I don't even know if I need any of this burial insurance. If that's what you call it. Just be looking for my call. All right. Greetings and salutations, Dave Duford here. And if you are sick and tired of hearing the I need to think about it objection in selling insurance, and you want a foolproof strategy to overcome it, and also understand the psychology of why you hear it, you found the right video. Today in this video, what we're going to be doing is going into the psychology of why you hear I need to think about it so that you can better understand the psychological state your prospects in when they give you that crappy response. And then to A, also how to overcome it with a foolproof script that I've taught thousands of agents for 10 years, recruiting agents and being an agent myself. And then I'm also going to give you some strategies on how to overcome I need to think about it before it's even said. So if you like the sound of that, stick around. Okay, so I think before going into the actual scripting and how to overcome it, because that's what all the other guys do when they do these kind of videos, is they say, oh, if you hear this, then you just say that. Like them saying I need to think about it is just some guttural lizard brain reaction. It's not. And there's some definite psychology that if you understand why it's being done, and why it was even said to begin with, and you'll be better equipped not only to overcome it as you hear it, but to overcome it in future presentations so you don't have to hear it anymore. So what does it mean when somebody says, I need to think about it, after you've given a great presentation or what you think is great? Well, what I believe you are hearing psychologically is the idea of hesitance from your prospect. They are hesitating on making a commitment financially. And making a commitment financially is a very serious endeavor for anybody that talks about doing something and then has to face the idea of actually doing something. And what this all is getting to is that when you hear, I need to think about it, it means the prospect lacks confidence. And that's either a lack of confidence in themselves, a lack of confidence in your product, or a lack of confidence in you. And what this speaks to is there is a potential for a greater issue going on here that you have simply not done enough as a salesperson to gain the full commitment and trust from your prospect at the most pivotal time when trust and commitment are absolutely imperative to have. So what does this all mean? Why does this matter? It means that there's something that happened in your presentation that caused the client not to trust or believe in what you're saying or who you are. So what this speaks to is that in your presentations, going forward after this one, again, we're gonna show you how to deal with this in the moment, but going forward, you need to examine what it is that you're doing in your presentation that make people say, I need to think about it. Examine what you are saying in the opening. How well are you building rapport? Are you establishing the agenda very early on about why you're there and what you're looking to accomplish? Are you pre-qualifying and going deeper than deep? Are you understanding what the client's looking for? And for example, if you're selling life insurance, are you backing the hearse up against the front porch? Are, are they disturbed by what would happen if they don't take action? And it's likely that all of these problems with, I need to think about it, stem from this lack of cohesiveness and depth in the opening part of your presentation. So understand, I know you're looking for the script and you're looking to overcome this with just words, but it's more than just words. It's something else that's not being said and not being developed well enough. And if you don't fix that, then you've got bigger problems than when, how do I deal with one little objection? That's the bigger issue here. And I think you need to think about that as well as how to deal with it in the moment. So take that away as being a really important thing 
because as I give you this script, it's going to work, but it doesn't necessarily fix the bigger problems at hand. So think about that. So now there are times, of course, when somebody says, I need to think about it because they just lack confidence in themselves. Maybe they just are scared of commitment. A lot of people are after all. And so you've got to be able to, as you get to the close, engender a sense of confidence from them that them making a decision is a good thing. And that you've got to be able to deal with it with a good script that when they kind of pull back in fear of commitment that you can still instill confidence in them to overcome that. So here's a script that I like to use. And the way the script works is that it examines what it is that they need to think about and kind of gives you more specificity. But it also isolates the other objections if there are any out of that. And then it allows you to hone in on what the real matter is and then overcome it with some facts and logic and some emotional urgency too. So the first thing I like to say here on the script is when I hear somebody say, Dave, I need to think about it. My response is this. That's fine, Mrs. Prospect. I totally understand why I would say that. But when you say I need to think about it, how do you mean? I like this because when I say this script, it allows the client to, to lower their defenses. I'm not arguing with them. I'm showing some empathy by saying, that's okay, Mrs. Prospect. And then when I conclude the sentence by saying, well, how do you mean by that? It allows the clients to verbalize a little bit more about where they're actually stuck at and where their thinking lies about what it is specifically they need to think about. So sometimes you get a response like, well, you know, I don't decide on uh, something like this on the first time I look at it. I like to pray about it, etc. cetera. Um, sometimes you get some specificity, but many times you won't get a specific answer back. So you got to push a little deeper. So a nice retort to that would be to say, hey, that's fine. I totally understand that. But when you specifically say that you need to pray about it or you need to think about it more, where are you stuck at here? Are you saying that, you, is it an issue about the price? Is it an issue about the coverage, the company? Tell me what exactly is causing you to have concern. So I like to say that script if I don't get a firm answer on the first question, because if I don't get a firm request or firm answer, then what happens is, is that I'm kind of just shooting in the dark. I'm blind. I don't know where to spend my focus and attention on. So I may feed them some, some issues that are most common, price, the coverage, the, you know, something like that, because those are the most common hangups that people have. And trying to feed that to them to get them to admit as much is a great way to start. So let's say in this example, the client says the price is too high. Here's how it continued to the next step of this uh, rebuttal. And this is where I would isolate the objection. And I would say something like, okay, so what you're saying is the price is not where you'd like it to be. So besides the price, are there any other issues that need to be addressed that would cause you not to move forward today? So what this does with the script is that it allows me to focus just on price, but also leave open the opportunity to maybe it's something else that's a concern. So when I go to addressing that in a moment, I'll know what I need to address. The next thing I'll say to this is that, okay, Mrs. Prospect, so let's say I can get the price addressed in a way that satisfies you. If we can do that, do you see any reason you would not move forward today? So what this is, is a sense of an ultimatum. If I resolve the concern about price, then why wouldn't you move forward is essentially what I'm trying to say. And this is a trial close. If I satisfy them, you'll move forward with me. If you like the pro new price I find for you, you'll continue with me, right? So it gets them bought in verbally and gets them a little bit more committed. At this point, it's time to close and give them some kind of uh, proposition of why they need to continue on the basis of, in this case, price. So in this case, you could lower your price, uh, start with something. Um, I like to use a lot of folkisms here, like, look, Mrs. Prospect, price, I understand why you're concerned, and the good news is why don't we just start with a little less coverage? Yes, it's less, but something is better than nothing. You're in the greatest health that you'll ever be in. No, nothing is promised when it comes to the future. And you need to start with something today. And the good news is you can always get more later. We've got lots of opportunities. Get started on something now. Take care of your loved ones. Give them the peace of mind that you want them to have. And let's get started. And then, so that's kind of my way of selling them. And I'll kind of, it depends on what you say here. I try to go back to what hot button points they have, like if they're concerned about a daughter having coverage or they're concerned about what would happen if they die and the mortgage wasn't paid off. I reference that information, whatever they said earlier, so it's not so much scripted or canned, 
But I do try to go to town on this and 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 then hit those hot button points and close. And the the last point here is you got to close with a closing statement. It's not just enough to say buy because you want peace of mind and all this. The next thing you got to say at the end of that is so who do you want your beneficiary to be? So we'll start with the 5,000 today instead of the 10,000. Who do you want your beneficiary to be? That closing statement is going to give you that much momentum because if somebody's like 51% not committed, 49% committed, that little bump will get them over the line and get you the deal closed. So that is the script of how to deal with the most frustrating objection I need to think about it. But understand, guys and gals out here, it's, it's not just about the words that you say. It's about examining what happens in your presentation that causes them to say, I need to think about it. What other things are happening about how you are presenting that causes the client to not fully believe and trust in you? That is a big deal. And again, the sales gurus out there, they want to make it think like you just say one thing and that solves your problem. That's not true. It does help at certain times to use scripts like these to overcome when they're kind of teeter-tottering on the edge of buying. But there's a greater issue at hand here. And it's how do I gain the trust and belief in me as an agent from the prospect? And Because without that, and if this is a chronic problem, you're not going to sell a lot of insurance policies. So revisit rapport building, revisit pre-qualifying, revisit building value in your product as it stands against the competition. And what you're going to find is if you can do well at that, you won't even hear, I need to think about it anymore because you're selling a prospect that believes in you, that likes you and knows you're an expert and wants to do business with you. Thanks so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, please leave them below. If you enjoy my channel and you haven't already, subscribe and like the video. And feel free to go to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ if you want to learn more about joining my agency to sell final expense Medicare and annuities. Take care.